Okay. So now, before we make our heat pipe, we need to kind of figure out what the volume is of our, of our pipe. Um, so what I've done is I've just taken another one and a half meter pipe, I put a cap on the end of it, and then we're going to fill it up with water and we're, we're, going, to, we're going to measure it basically. So let's just do that and see, and see where we get to. I don't know if you guys can see this on the shot or not, but I can hear it, I can hear it gurgling and filling up pretty quickly. Uh, things like pretty much the top. There we go. We're at the top now. So that's the that's the that's the pipe full of water. Hope you can see that sort of bubbling out the top now. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just grab um, some kitchen scales, and then we'll we'll empty it in. Um, zero this out. I'm gonna see if you guys can see this. I don't know if you can. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's see if I can get the right angle for you. Okay, so let's. Um, Let's try and tip it up, see what we get. Okay, 215, 216 milliliters. Okay, so that's not far off kind of what we were expecting. I guess if we, um, if we just have a quick look, I guess, at the at some of the maths that I did for that. So if we had a 15 mil pipe, um, I reckon that's probably internal size about 14 millimeters, which gives us a seven millimeter radius. The area then is obviously pi r squared, which gives us 153 millimeters squared. Volume is our area times length. So we take a 153 and we multiply it by 1500. 1500 being one and a half meters in millimeters, which gives us a, a, an answer of 229, 500 millimeters cubed. Divide that back down by a thousand to get back into milliliters, and we, if we calculate it, that's two twenty two twenty nine. We just we just measured that, and we got um two hundred and seventeen, right? So give or take, we're good. So if we're going to put ten percent of that into our heat pipe, let's call that twenty two mil. Okay, so um, I've got my football syringe. I'm just popping that in the top of the heat pipe. We've got our um. A bit less than 20 mil, so I'll top that up again in a minute. I'm going to pop that in and then I'm just going to push this in. Okay. 20 mil in there. Um, and I'll just, I don't think anything came out, right? So I'm just going to screw that back on. And then, yeah, we've got some, we've got some fluid in there. It's good. Now we're going to go and get our um, heat gun again and we're going to basically we're going to heat this end of the, the pipe until we get steam coming out that end and once we've got steam coming out we will seal that back up and we're done right okay so for this next bit we're just going to use our roofing torch make sure obviously wherever you do this that you've got plenty of space and plenty of air we're inside a garage doors are open so we don't have a problem and basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the torch I'm going to put it onto the bottom of the heat pipe and as we come to the top um, you can obviously hopefully see some gas venting out so with a bit of luck I'll try and line up the shot so that you can that you can see it and then what we've got over here we've got a little top and once we're good to go we've got steam coming out we'll pop it on so let's get the let's get the gas on the bottom of the pipe and get it started heating up okay so it's on, um, heating up. Now we just got to wait. We'll get our our pipe in readiness, and we'll get a we'll get grab a bob as well because it's going to get a bit hot and a bit and a bit steamy. So we can cap it off. And we did this in one of the earlier videos, but I'm not really sure that I managed to capture the the water coming out. Okay, so now hopefully you can see it pluming out the steam, which is kind of what we want, right? So we're gassing out, which is great. And then, we'll cap it off and we're done. Take the heat off, turn that off. And then, 
seal that up. Okay. And then we have now created our heat pipe. So what's happened in there is that we've driven out all the air. We've had all our steam come out. And effectively, we've capped that off. And effectively, now that it's capped off, we've got effectively a low pressure tube. So we've driven out all the air and effectively expanded all the air um, and the gas that was in there. And then we sealed it. And as it cools down, obviously no more air can go back in. So we've got a low pressure tube and that effectively creates the heat pipe. Okay, so <clears throat> this next step, pretty straightforward. And um, what we've done is we've taken seven um, two liter um, mineral water bottles, cut the bottoms of them off, and then we effectively just stack them into each other uh, and wrap up the pipe. Now towards the top of the pipe, um, you can see here, this is where we actually have the, the heat exchanger bit. Um, it's inside, obviously we have to cut some holes to get the pipes in and out to that. But the top bottle and the bottle that are underneath it effectively go on upside down to each other and tucked into each other. Um, and the whole thing obviously is centered through the centers of the bottles all the way down to the bottom of the stack, which gives it a little bit of um, structural support, although not very much. Um, but again, just protects it a little bit from wind. So I'll just show you how to cut off the bottom of a bottle. Obviously, but be a bit careful when we're using a Stanley knife and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so you just take your take your bottle, and at the bottom there's a sort of seam inside the bottle. There's a little horizontal line. You don't have to cut around there, but I just kind of use that as a bit of a, a bit of a guide, and then I just cut around that line all the way around the bottle, back to the other side, and then chuck off the the last little bit. done. Let's tidy that up a little bit. There we go. And we've got one and then obviously when you just slide it into the next bottle you get quite a quite a tight snug fit and you just keep doing that all the way through and then put your pull through. Okay so I've unscrewed the top of the mineral water bottles, I'm just using a very naughty um, cooking thermometer. So let's just say that this isn't going to be like massively scientific, but let's see what we can do. Again, it's kind of hard to do with them um, one hand, but let's get a go. Right, so we've hit 340, and I guess context here is it's probably been outside in the sunshine for probably about an hour, something like that, right? So we're still climbing up pretty swiftly at the moment though which is kind of good really impressed so far so I guess the other thing is with it being inside the the mineral water bottles albeit they're empty is that I guess we're also reducing the draft on the heat pipe as well so that should give it a little bit of um, I guess thermal insulation from wind and things like that and with it capped off at the top of the bottom it's not completely airtight um, but it's still it's still pretty good so yeah we're not doing too badly I mean that's um that's 50 degrees nearly, um, and it's not to touch actually, um, just moving my hand away from the bit of metal. Um, so yeah, it's um, that's not too bad at all. I'm just trying to get the probe on properly so that you guys can see the see the temperature. Um, looks like yeah, see it's topping out slowly now. But yeah, now we're that's not bad, right? And I'll give you the context. Um, although my accent might betray it, we're actually in, in London and this is early September. So we're, we've just hit 50 degrees with a bit of copper pipe made into a heat pipe um, inside some recycled two litre mineral water bottles. So that's not too shabby. I'm pretty pleased with that. So I guess this will be module one. What I need to do now is obviously is connect the, the heat exchanger pipe elements over um, so we can see actually how much heat we can actually transfer into water. And uh, we'll make a, another video of that in a sec.